Hello! How's it going? <laughs> Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. This stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook through for yourself during uh, this ongoing uh, panini and for the rest of your adult life. Um, say hello in the chat and throw us an egg in the chat if you like what you're seeing or hearing throughout the show. That is how we show love around here. Uh, last time on Attack the Pantry, we had our very first cook-along, and we made dipping soba. You can get the recipe on my Patreon. The link is below the video, uh, and you can watch the replay. It's going to be on Twitch for the next uh, 60 days, I believe. Um, you can watch all those past clips from that and from previous shows on my channel. If you click on videos, the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-J-L-V. Make sure to subscribe there. Uh, let's get some business out of the way. I am a Twitch affiliate. That means that I make a little bit of money every time people subscribe to this channel, either with real money or you can connect your Amazon Prime account and you gift a subscription to your favorite creators every month. It renews every month. Um, so if you have one, uh, if you want to connect it, you can click on that purple button that says gift a sub. You get a little crown next to your name in the chat. And it's so cute. Um, there are lots of really great links below the video, but one way to help us out is to tell people that you're watching this show right now, that you're hanging out in the chat and you're going to throw some eggs in the chat because, you know, that's uh, the more the merrier. <laughs> um, so today I have a guest. Uh, this is very exciting. Please welcome my friend, Eric. Hi. Hi. Hey! <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks where, for having me. Where are you streaming from? Uh, I am joining you from uh, San Diego, sunny San Diego, California. N Notice the light difference. It is. <laughs> it is window. Quite bright, quite warm here. Um, well, thank you for joining me. Um, could you please tell the folks who you are? Yeah, you thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. So, um, uh, uh, my name is Eric. Yeah, and I, Jen, Jen and I, you and I have known each other. We we pinpointed it back to 2014. Is it 2014? That's yeah. I looked it up in my in my Kickstarter backer history where we both <laughs> attended a bacon themed dinner in the kicks Kickstarter. Uh, office, yeah. In the office, in the in little the cantina there, um, and that's that's where we first met. And then uh, we both are uh, <laughs> ice cream enthusiasts of various different levels. Yes, um, and I yes. think that's how our friendship then cemented and and grew from there. So, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 what else is there to know about me? I am also an avid home cook. Um, I cook like a ton of meals for five, <laughs> three hungry children, my spouse and myself. And yeah, here to talk about ice cream and stuff. You also like games. Oh, I, I do say. like games. Yes. Like that's games? something else we have in common. <laughs> we are both, we are both shadow runners. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I also write and design tabletop role-playing games and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Oh man, there's so many folks in the chat. Welcome, Soleil. Soleil's here. Hey, we have Emily. Hi, <laughs> Bear Claws here. I oh, I didn't know there was a horrible goose emote. I want horrible goose emote. <laughs> um, and Chris is here. Yay! Welcome everybody. Glad to see you. Um, welcome to the show. Uh, this is usually the segment where I will share my screen and show off photos of what people cooked this week, but people didn't send me anything. <laughs> but goodness, I'm still going to share my screen because we have a lot to talk about. Um, I actually pulled up a bunch of ice creams that I've made in the past, and we'll talk about some ice creams you've had and some of your favorite scoops. Um, but if folks have questions about ice cream in general or have tips on where to find really great ice cream, we're all about it. I just got to make sure I open my chat on my phone so that I don't miss out on any of your lovely comments. So one moment, sorry, so, sorry, sorry. <laughs> all right, gonna share my screen real quick. Oop, doop, doop, doop. Beware, it's gonna be Twilight Zone for a second. Twilight Zone. Um, so welcome to my screen. Uh, let's see. I, I, yeah. So these are all the ice creams that I 
have made. But I also wanted to just quickly talk about One Piece. <laughs> for people who don't follow me on Twitter, um, I've been live tweeting One Piece since June. <laughs> And the highlight of my week has been Soba Mask. <laughs> this is a alias for one of the characters who um, is trying to dis disguise himself in, in Wano and didn't say his real name. He says, call me Soba Mask because he has a Soba pop up in the show. Uh, but anyway, that's my one little one piece uh, food trivia. Um, but yes, uh, Eric, what, can you just describe your relationship with ice cream uh I really, the only the only word i can come up with is enthusiast um i've always loved ice cream it's my favorite food in the world <laughs> um and that and i think right when you and i around the time when you and i first met was right when i moved to new york i was kind of oh. trying to come up with an excuse to like get out of our you know washington heights fifth floor walk up and get get into different parts of the city so i was like i'm just gonna go to everywhere that has ice cream um, in new york i'm gonna go to a different place like once a week and um and then yeah that then a friend of mine invited me on an ice cream crawl <laughs> and i instagrammed that and, and then from there a uh a, a long and and deep relationship with new york ice cream in particular um was, really was forged great lens to view new york like, yeah, it is because there are neighborhoods that have a lot of ice cream. Like, you know what? What's a far? You you were coming from Washington Heights, you said. Yep. But you know, Odd Fellows that you mentioned earlier, well before we started the stream, is in like Williamsburg. So yeah. you really like went all over the place. Um, yeah. My goodness. Well, uh, there were, one time we even did the the tour to hills that we went to every Imple Hills in one day. A friend oh. of mine and I did. So that's all the way out to Rockaway was the farthest away Ample I Hills. I didn't remember that they had one in Rockaway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's still there. It's, it's out near, um, is it Rees Beach? Like where there's yeah, that like semi-circular kind of food court area. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had a scoop shop out there, but I think it's closed. I, I think then. it's closed now. And so is the one in Red Hook. Like, oh. Yeah, they it's did a little a consolidation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. My goodness. Um, but we'll just do a quick tour of ice creams that I've made. Um, yeah. This, uh, I have a lot of heavy makeup on in this photo, but um, that is a Briat Sovereign ice cream that I made with um, macerated strawberries and champagne and mint, chocolate mint. <laughs> Amazing. I made, this, I made this on grocery games. Okay. <laughs> I was so determined to like get people to like cheese and ice cream. <laughs> well, I've had one of your cheese ice creams, not this one, but, oh, but I had, had another one. At, uh... Maybe you had an iteration of this one. Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Yeah, but I think I switched the triple creme cheese in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, or maybe I got... it was this one. It was at, at the shuffleboard place or whatever. Oh right? yeah. 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 The, was that the, this that... one? That's a version of this one. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thank you. Thank I'm a you convert. To, I mean, I was never, I was never skeptical of cheese ice cream, to be honest. So <laughs> I'm an easy sell, but uh, it was, it was really, really good. I mean, I've been making this a lot because I was, I got kicked off the show for making it. <laughs> really? Spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> but uh, I really liked it, and I, it's like one of my my regular ice creams that I have in rotation if if I'm making ice creams. Um, but I also developed a bunch over the summer for some cookbooks that I'm working on. Um, this was a turmeric ice cream. I, I like started with the New York Times custard recipe um, and then just kind of switched a bunch of things in there. Um, that's just some Hershey's chocolate syrup on top. <laughs> it, has, it has a place. Yeah. <laughs> This is some corn ice cream that I was working on. It's really, um, you can see that it's really soft. It was very scoopable, but didn't really get hard enough for a, um, for an ice cream sandwich, which was the oh, final, yeah. final version of what I was doing. There's nothing worse than a mushy ice cream sandwich. And yeah. just the cookies smushed together and the ice cream goes everywhere. I mean, there are many things worse, but 
in the grand scheme of things. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it needs to have some structural exactly. integrity, a little bit more icy structure. Um, so that ice cream went into this uh, nectarine Sunday, and wow. this is coming out in a book in May, which is very exciting. Um, it's roasted nectarines and crushed pistachio brittle on top. I didn't really do a saucy sauce. Wow. Um, well, I, I think we wrote it in the recipe to do the pan juices over okay. over the Sunday, but I didn't. I just from didn't the nectarines, it. yeah. I didn't photograph it. <laughs> My goodness. Um, oh, here's an ice cream sandwich that I was successful with. This is a corn cookie, like oatmeal cookie, corn oatmeal cookie, sure. and then a corn ice cream. See in there, you got the structural integrity. It's yeah, key. you can see like when you slice through ice cream that like. I don't know. You see those cr those crumbly mm -hmm. lines. That's that's like the real structure there, and it's yeah, not yeah. melting all over the place, <laughs> which is fun. Um, this this was an experiment. This was a vegan chocolate sorbet. Um, I think it needs more heft. <laughs> mm. It's it's very creamy and it, yeah. it was really chocolatey, but I think it needs more. Um, volume more air more oh, yeah more something like something chew on in there <laughs> yeah yeah but my my ch my challenge is that i'm allergic to coconut so yeah. i can't i can't use that as I, a, I was gonna I, I didn't know if you were comfortable out of your coconut <laughs> allergy here on air so i wasn't gonna bring it up <laughs> but right. i know i know that can be hard with the non-dairy ice creams it's all right i i've mentioned it a few times so okay. far it is tragic coming from a you know island nation and yeah. <laughs> being allergic to coconuts uh, but this is that same chocolate sorbet um wow. with some roasted rhubarb and some mint uh that was really cute cute together i ended up drinking the rest of that uh <laughs> drinking the rest of that ice cream because it melted so quickly um but you sent me some links here yeah. we have some instagram links i'm gonna zoom in a little bit here this yeah. Is a, so this is. I, I think my first two are Oddfellow. This is this oh. not Oddfellow <laughs> sponsored uh, post. Not sponsored. Not. Sponsored. But I did want to talk about banana splits, and this is the only banana split I could find. So I love a banana split. Any only banana split I could quickly find in my Instagram feed. I love a banana split. Um, <laughs> Oddfellows is funny because they they like split the banana the other way, but uh, which makes it a little bit difficult to get the proper distribution of, of banana, banana to ice, ice cream, cream, but that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm a fan. Um, what are all the toppings on this particular? Banana? I have no idea. You know I know that? they do like, um, uh, you know, those little like chocolate pearls is like oh. their, is their big thing that they put on everything or not on everything, but it's a nice, nice topping that they have. And then I think they do their own, like macerated cherries in house, which is a nice change. I mean, I love a, you know, straight out of the jar, bright stoplight red maraschino cherry, but um, <laughs> those uh, the the house made maraschino mm. cherries are always a nice touch. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I thought those were berries at first, but those are the chocolate. The chocolate no, yeah, they're little, little things. whatever chocolate trays or whatever mm. you want to call them. Oh my gosh, I really haven't had a banana split in years. Um, I remember Baskin Robbins also had a banana royale, right? Mm. Is that right? Um, but I don't know the difference. Is that just that the I banana is cut up? <laughs> is it? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's the difference. Uh... <laughs> so maybe this is not a banana. Well, I guess it's still split. So technically, maybe we'll allow it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, did they just like cut the banana in half and then like stick it on the Yeah, end? it's like the banana <laughs> only goes like that's all. All you are seeing ninety nine percent of the banana in that picture. Like there's not there's, the banana doesn't like go it's through just the not, middle. It's not that long. <laughs> no, no, sadly not. That's very funny. Oh my gosh, um, this is another this is odd also fellows. <laughs> also odd fellows. Um, but I, I I wanted to shout out odd fellows because of their scoop. Like they have the best. They have like. Just it's these perfectly round scoops. Beautiful scoop. And yeah. also give a moment to shouting out for winter ice cream eating because this was <laughs> in February. And that's the only way you can get this shot because you got to take it, walk like three blocks to get the bridge and the skyline behind you. And <laughs> February is the perfect time to do that because the ice cream doesn't melt at melt. all. So I'm a big fan of, of winter ice cream. The lines are shorter. The scoops last longer. 
it's it's great oh man oh, okay catch it up in the chat um chris says a banana royale is cut into rounds okay thank you Good for clarifying know. that and bear claw says the last ice cream i made was a riff on a dark and stormy i was told it was real good until they were slapped in the face with the ginger ginger is um a tricky tricky ingredient in frozen foods because when it's cold, all of those um, volatile compounds that make ginger gingery um, are kind of tamped down by uh, cold temperatures. But then when it's exposed to heat, i.e. in your mouth and you, you chew it up, it releases all that ginger horseradishy sensation. <laughs> and when you're mm -hmm. in the middle of chewing, you know, your tongue is kind of late to respond because everything is so cold. And of course, it goes right up into your nasal cavity, <laughs> right there. Um, so yeah, gin be careful with the ginger when you're making ice cream. <laughs> um, but wow. Um, so these flavors in your shot are chocolate chili, uh, yep. car caramel chocolate toffee, milk chocolate, and peanut butter in a chocolate dipped cone. Yeah, they just they have those little chocolate dipped cones there. It's a it's a nice little addition to the. <laughs> to the triple scoop it's a nice touch um their shop always smells so good uh i don't think that because sometimes when i walk into an ice cream shop and i smell the waffle mm. it's it's like too sweet um, oh yeah yeah their waffles cones are not super sweet it's not too yeah. sweet yeah, yeah, yeah that's what i remember about them um i don't know do you have an opinion about i mean you just complimented Probably. the scoop the <laughs> scoop shape like this is a very perfectly round scoop shape yeah do you remember um thrifty or you ever go to a pharmacy thrifty where they had ice cream this might be a very specific like old northern california thing for anybody yeah who's not walking. yet not yet i'm putting it on my list as we speak <laughs> well it's it's old it's like okay. they closed a lot of the shops but um before it was rite aid and like pharmacies and like that kind of thing it ha also had like an old timey ice cream like uh shop in the front of the store and they had cylindrical scoops oh instead of instead of like a rolled scoop it was like a cylinder that had this like uh <laughs> well i don't know what word is this for uh <laughs> like, like a little like you cut it and dropped it, it or something no, uh, it, it it was more of like a um push pop Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was cylindrical, and then it would go on these um, wafer cones, not sugar cones. Sure. Yeah, um, I really like the rainbow sherbet there. But nice. do you have an opinion about the scoop shapes, or have you experienced other alternatives? I don't know. How shapes? high can you stack the cylinders? That would be my number one question right out the gate. <laughs> all, all about, like, can we get can we get a triple scoop <laughs> with with cylinders i don't know if that's possible triple scoop is my preferred ice cream like delivery that's amazing i could not handle three scoops well it also I... depends on the place like some places yeah they just they're the giant scoops i mean that's one of the reasons i i'm gonna well, there's another wait there's three odd fellows pictures in the ones that i sent you i'm so sorry <laughs> No, it's all good. It's all uh, good. Yeah. Anyway, yes, I like three scoops, and I like smaller scoops. That's my my the ask. I don't like to be a bother at ice cream shops, so my ask is like, can I get three kids scoops? Is <laughs> that possible? And usually they're like, they think I'm trying to like game the system or something. I'm like, no, I just want an actual scoop, and I want three of them. Like, how can I have that happen? And then usually they say no, and so I just get two. And that's fine. <laughs> I understand why people don't want to do three scoops. Totally makes sense. Like they they think I'm gonna let it melt and fall over and be oh. mad at them or whatever. And I'm like, you've never seen me eat ice cream. <laughs> it's not gonna melt. Don't worry. <laughs> you're a fat. You're a fast. Uh, I am operator. a very efficient <laughs> ice cream eater. Yes. Um, and I, I I like the idea of having three that you could you try a spectrum of flavors yeah. from a shop. Um, but you also have to be strategic about uh, them going together. It's true. And yeah. I, not to, I'm, this is the last time I'm going to say these two words together. 
because I feel like I've already said this five times, structural integrity is key. Because, <laughs> like, you can't have, uh, you know, like, uh, especially a lot of places have, like, boozy flavors now or what mm-hmm. have you. Like, you can't have that on the bottom. No. Because that's going to so melt soft. so much faster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, for folks who don't tricky. know the science behind that, it's that, um, you know, liquor doesn't really freeze. And so when you put a little bit in ice cream, it's going to result in a more like softer texture and um, less structural integrity. I will say the word. You don't have to say it. I can say structural integrity. Um, But yeah, booze-based ice creams tend to be on the softer side is what we're saying. Uh, (laughs) But still delicious. Yeah, really great. Uh, Let's let's move on to the next one. And I think this is the third. This is the third and last. Uh... Yeah, so this is just more of a funny story. I did eat all six of those scoops. Oh my gosh! Um, I, I don't, so I still don't know how this happened. Like I was, I want to be clear. Like I, I, I like ice cream. I was never like, I don't know. I, I never did anything like this before. You know, like what we're seeing here. So the, somebody from Deadspin, which was like, was was a Gawker brand. Is it still a Gawker brand? I don't oh, know. I don't know. I can't confirm. I don't. They know. just like DM me on Instagram, and they were like. Face Facebook had just launched this like Facebook Live feature, and they were like, "We want somebody to just talk about ice cream on Facebook Live for like twenty minutes, and then eat a <laughs> bunch of ice cream." Will you do this? And I was like, "Yeah, I'm not doing anything else. Like, I'll I'll meet you in." And they like, <clears throat> I, I I um talked to Mohan, who's like the one of the owners at Up Fellows, who we have become friends over the years and i was like we're gonna come over and do this are you okay with that and he was like yeah let's do it um <laughs> and so my the the folks at odd fellows put these six scoops together and then oh like God. had them in the deep freeze and they're also connected with little so i sam first i sampled every flavor in the case which is fine <laughs> i'm not a big sampler i like to just go straight to the scoops myself but for Just showbiz head first head first yeah, yeah. yeah. All and right. so then they brought out these six these six scoops and they had been in the deep freeze and they were connected with the dowels so it was a very <laughs> tricky uh on-screen effort to eat all six of these while like subtly like getting the sticks out with my teeth and then like hiding them away and it was a total mess it was fun but it was a total on mess. facebook live on facebook live <laughs> Which, uh, I, yeah, it was it was pretty funny. That's great. Anyway, thus ends the Odd Fellows slides. I promise. I think well, I don't know. I have a I have a follow up question. Um, so just say that we're walking into a new ice cream shop. Um, how do you decide what you're going to put in your triple scoop? Great question. Can I <laughs> ask some clarifying questions? Of course. Is, this this is my first time there. Yes. Am I going to be able to come back someday? Ooh, yes. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, because if I'm <laughs> if I'm able to come back someday, then I look at the specials, right? Like that's okay. my first stop, right? Ooh, this is good I, advice. I might really be losing advice. whatever's in the case now; might be gone at the end of the month. So, <laughs> like, which, which this has happened recently, right? I just moved to San Diego in the last few months, and I've been going to a lot of the ice cream shops here. And so I walk in, and I'm like, okay, do I want to go with one of their staples, or do I want one of these like seasonal flavors or whatever? Um, so usually I see if there's a seasonal flavor that like, usually I try to pick a flavor that I have some experience with, but maybe isn't like a standard, mm. um, you know, cause I do want to be able to like judge them a little bit, you know, and I also <laughs> love, oh, did that come out too aggressive? I no, want I to evaluate it. them. Evaluate. Is that better? <laughs> um, so I love something in like a fruit that's like not maybe a like, you know, not a strawberry. Like, I mean, my favorite, if there's a mango ice cream in the case, oh, yeah. like that's going in my scoop. Cause then I know, right. Like that tells you so much. Um, because I mean, partially because, uh, right. Like if they're using a premix, like a base, this is going to get, so, no, um, please tell, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> especially in California, a lot of ice cream vendors use a, a base that comes directly from a dairy. So that means it comes from the dairy with like, the cream and the eggs and all that stuff. And in particular in California, it is most often Strauss base, which is great. Um, but if you like go to 10 different ice cream shops in like the Bay area, probably eight of them are going to taste very similar. similar yeah. And that's the reason. And so one of the reasons I like to do a fruit is because 
it gives you a little bit of a insight into whether they're using a premix base or not. Because if you're adding fruit to a premix base, you're obviously like changing your fat to moisture mm -hmm. ratio, right? As opposed to, you know, adding like a, like a non-moisture based flavoring, like, you know, <laughs> peanut butter or like chocolate or whatever, um, or mix-ins, right? Mix-ins, if you're using a premix base, then people will do mix-ins like, like crazy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, right. That, I mean, I, really, I don't know if I'm allowed to name names here, right? But like, in the Bay Area, like you have Mr. And Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Miscellaneous and Humphrey Slocomb, like right, they're both using. I think they're both using Strauss base, and they they do a ton of mix-ins, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. I love a yeah. mix-in as much as the next person. But if you're really like in a shop for the first time and you want to evaluate them, so I like to start with a fruit, um, it's mango if they have it. If not, whatever they have. <laughs> um, what's next? A chip. I always love to, to taste a chip. So. I grew up in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, home of Grater's <laughs> Ice Cream, which is the best chips in ice cream, period, anywhere, ever. Um, they like they do a still, even to this day, like small uh, French, what is it, French churn style? And yeah, they like pour the chocolate into the ice cream as it's churning. Uh... So they actually get air incorporated into the chocolate as it's cooling. They have these like big chunks that even when they're like straight out of the freezer are still you can still bite through them oh my god anyway it's great so i love a chip and That's then exciting. i don't know a wild card right i don't know what the third one will be something that that piques my attention so like uh the, my one of my first scoops at odd odd fellows was like their malt maitake <gasps> they're like malted mushroom flavor malted mushroom yeah which is really Ooh. really good and so like if i see something like that no brainer that's going in there so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I just gonna catch up in the chat really quick. Emily is endorsing your triple scoop. Yeah. Um, oh, Andrew. Hi, Andrew's here in the chat dishing about ice cream dishing. Uh, Emily says, oh, I like like stracciatella. That sounds amazing. Oh, yes, so the yeah. ice cream with the is chocolate. Yeah, mixed yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, another comment from Andrew. Woof. That sounds amazing. Mm. It does sound amazing. But I these are recommend. great principles for entering pretty much any sort of um establishment where you're getting something for the first time which is look at the specials look for um you know something that is you know not not something you're gonna see all the time and if you could come back try all the other things but yeah those are those are all really great <laughs> <laughs> ways to approach an ice cream shop and yeah. even this, this applies to cheese too because oh, cheese, yeah. cheese also has seasonality um some things are not going to be available for like the next month if they run out you know so uh i i like i like that approach very much yeah well and i think right like the being able to i know i said judging but i meant evaluate whatever <laughs> but like right, like something that you're at least a little familiar with so you have some context going in like yeah i mean to be clear i love all ice cream as we'll see in the future slides like we're gonna talk about <laughs> mr softy trucks i i like i i will i have sometimes people will be like oh all we have in our freezer right now is like you know Hagen Doss or whatever. I'm like, Hagen Doss is amazing. It's like, so are you good. kidding me? Yes, bring me the bring me whatever you have. <laughs> um, because like, but but still, it's like it's good to know. Like, oh, this is well executed, right? Like, I can taste the fresh ingredients. Like, I you know things like that. Like, it just tastes different. Um, mm -hmm. And so, if you have that context of saying like, oh, I know what kind of mango ice cream or you know avocado or olive oil ice cream or whatever that i really really love so i can tell if this is is something that i am going to really love and want to come back to or like you know maybe i don't need to maybe maybe when i thought i was coming back to this place i'm not actually going to come back to this place very frequently mm. i mean because that's something i really like i said you know just moving here like figuring out like what what places am i going to go back to right like yeah. If you know, if Augie, if my three and a half year old is like, Baba, I want ice cream today. Where am I going to take him? Like, oh. am I, I going to take it? Which has ha I accidentally took him to ice cream after his first day at preschool, and then for like the next two weeks, he thought he just got ice cream every day after preschool. And I was like, uh, oh. that's not that's not Mistakes. really how that's not really how after school our after school routine is going to be. Mistakes but, yeah. were made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we got a question for you um, from Chris. What's the weirdest flavor you've ever tasted? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think the 
multi multi my talkies is pretty out there um i've had i mean, it's not it's not it's not weird to everyone but right the like um nordic salted black licorice ice cream oh, is definitely like a unique flavor it's so it's it is yeah quote unquote weird to me but it is not weird if you sure you know live in that in that particular region mm. um yeah what else i mean i really like like savory ice cream i know like olive oil and avocado you can find those in a lot of places but i i love yeah. those and yeah i'm a i'm a huge fan of the savory side of things For um sure. i like spice i like a lot of spice so i'll find the, the mexican hot chocolates with you know chili peppers in them i love that so so much i'm trying to remember i i'm a sucker for like a a honey ice cream mm. anything that has honey in it and i know that it's not as structurally sound as like a sucrose or a um a sugar based you know uh sweetener but i i just really like it um how, i pose this question to the rest of the chat like what are some interesting ice creams that you've had uh that uh, we can we can talk about i'd love to hear hear more um okay whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. okay we got, yeah. lot, we got a lot of chats we got a lot of chats licorice okay. chats um andrew is asking please give tips on extreme and or weird ice cream places to go i like super sour or bitter flavors whoa um <laughs> oh the adult licorice chris says <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um emily says i think salted saffron ice cream is still one of my all-time favorite unexpected Yum. ice cream flavors that sounds lovely um oh andrew just saw that on an episode of travel man who goes to helsinki okay great i'll have to check out that that show in general i haven't seen it um bear claw says i have a seasonal ice cream near me called friends giving that is amazing almond ice cream with blackberry swirl and sugar cookie dough yum whoa 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 oh we have yeah we have licorice chats in the chat um zach is here hi zach um maybe my favorite ice cream ever was a little local shop in my hometown that did cantaloupe ice cream one summer Ooh, i've had a cantaloupe soft serve in williamsburg um like a couple months ago uh highly recommend but you know that's vastly different from the texture of ice cream oh um, yeah melons extruded. can be real tricky yeah yeah so much moisture yeah um and that's you know being pulled from a machine versus being scooped uh yeah. but yeah we'll think on this one question here which was uh where can we find weird ice cream places to go like super sour or bitter flavors Hmm. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a gelato place there was when i was still in new york there's a gelato place in brooklyn that had like always had two savory flavors in the case and they had i remember once i went there and they had like an amaro Ooh. Just, like, a, specifically like a bitter flavor profile um that was really really good i'm blanking on the name of that though i'll have to look it up uh, I'm trying to remember. I don't think I've had ones in that flavor profile before, but I would try it. Yeah. I'm so, I'm all about digestives and especially orange zest. Like I really like that mm. smell very, very much. Yeah. Mm, mm. <laughs> no, I want ice cream. <laughs> um, you have like two more photos here. I oh, do. Oh, who's this? Speaking of soft serve from my hometown. So this is Putz's <laughs> Creamy Whip on the west side of Cincinnati, Ohio home of Eric Mersman. Um, <laughs> and yeah, this is uh, it's, uh, Mr. Putz, I think his name is. Oh, I'm going to get that wrong. I hope there's nobody in chat from Cincinnati. I'm sure I just <laughs> forgot what he's called. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, I went back home. This is in, in two, that was 2016. So I have gone back home. Every time I go back home in the summer, I try to make it to graders and putzes and sometimes ag as well. Mm. Um, but uh, this is like a little outdoor um soft serve place so this couple things we can talk about here one is blue moon flavor Whoa. which is a very midwest thing um we also when i grew up we also called it smurf ice cream because <laughs> i mean yeah <laughs> our our regional amusement park was king's island at the time the children's area was Hanna barbera themed which means smurf everything and so you could get the smurf ice cream the flavor here is the only way I could describe it is like the blue layer of the rocket pop. Oh, you know, which no. I don't actually, I cannot say for sure that it is a different flavor than the red and white layers of the rocket pop, but 
you know, there's some part of my lizard brain tells me that it is a different, a different flavor. I think it's supposed to be like blue raspberry, but it's just yeah. really it's citrusy blue. also. The, it's just blue. The dye. flavor is yeah. blue, exactly. <laughs> the flavor is blue. Um, and so this, you can go, you can order it, and then you can get the, you, you can ask for the Mr. Putz, and they give it sprinkles hair, and then the candy face. And when I did this, I was, I was ordering two, one for me, one for my niece. And I think I was being, I think I got judged rather harshly unfairly for ordering <laughs> one for myself um <laughs> wow. and then the other thing that makes putts is amazing is they clean their soft serve machine every single night fully clean it and that is the difference between a great soft serve place and a mediocre soft serve place you got to clean it every single night uh oh, it tastes so good it tastes so different <laughs> It's so much difference. Um, yeah, I think there is something to that and about the volume of um, like eggy dairy products. Uh, mm -hmm. I discovered this, like this is a very like 101 baking principle, but when you're making anything in, in a stand mixer and like you're, you're whipping egg whites or something like that. And if you don't clean the bowl, um, the next batch is just not going to, to fluff. It's just the volume oh, yeah. is just going to deflate um, because there are broken down materials and it adds a bunch of weight to the, to the ice cream or the substance that you're trying to whip up. Um, but in soft serve machines, it is introducing air into a solution. And if there is residue that is adding more weight mm. to the residue, I mean, to the, to the mix. And so if you don't clean it, it's just not going to be as floofy or as creamy and like that's kind of their whole brand is yeah, yeah. called creamy whip um also i'm just i'm just staring at these neko wafers um we can't buy those anymore right yeah I, I don't see them at I stores anymore um you got to go to like an old school candy shop or something like that to find them but um i used to eat a lot of neko wafers when i was little <laughs> I was a Smarties kid, were my chalky candy of choice, but I respect the decision to go Necco wafer. Well, it wasn't that I chose it. It's that it was available. <laughs> if, it, if I had a choice from the ice cream man, I would get um, that string of fizzy candies. They're like hard oh, nice. candy that have the, the fizz powder on the inside of them. Yeah. Yeah, I was really into that. And then my teenage cousins were really into that really sour salt it was like limon. It's just, oh, okay. it was not even candy. It was just like, and my mouth is watering thinking about it. It's like margarita salt. Nice. My, my, my growing up like candy that I look back on and I'm like, I should have probably thought that was bad, but I didn't. And I still don't was like the dots on the paper. You know, like, oh yeah. They're just called dots. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. they're just like, not just, to be confused with jelly dots. Not to be confused with the chewy the dots. Yellow dots. Right. Yeah. These were just. You're talking about the sheet. Yeah. And you the, had the like, yeah, candy buttons. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Blue, pink, yellow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, what else? Um, Emily says, Mr. Putt, so cute. <laughs> and delicious. Um, uh, Emily also says, blue ice cream reminds me of my favorite childhood ice cream, bubblegum ice cream from Putt Putt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Zach agrees. I love when you can only describe a flavor as blue. <laughs> very good. Very funny. Um, oh, and I see this is on a wafer cone. Do you yeah. have a pre preference of cone? So I, to me, this is a cake cone. But oh, I okay. understand what you say when you say wafer cone. I'm not right. I just think the different people have different. Like at at some places, they even have like they'll do drawings and be like, just point to which one you want because <laughs> you call this this and and anyway, um, I I like uh, sugar cone, which I call the pointy one sugar cone. The pointy one, yeah. Right. <laughs> I like, well, I mean, I like, I like waffle cones the best, but they're just always, they're too big. Like the ice cream gets lost down inside of it, especially mm -hmm. if you are, you know, I know taking, getting the ice cream for the Instagram, whatever. It doesn't work <laughs> as well in the waffle cone because you're like, no, really, there's three scoops in there. One of them is hidden, but um, yeah, the I'm, the a, I'm a waffle sugar wafer slash, nice. slash cake cone. But the next one is also, oh, I think a wafer cone. If I remember oh. correctly. All right, let's look at the next one. That's hey, classic double, double cherry Merlin. <laughs> classic from Mr. Softy 
in Washington Heights. I mean, this one was taken in Washington Heights. They are ever present. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, this is my go-to Mr. Softy order, which I know, I know that Mr. Softy, uh, the the Mr. Softy proprietor probably hates me for it because it is two two ice creams dipped half of it and then the rest is is in sprinkled but <laughs> i don't know it's sometimes it's worth it's worth the death stairs to get to get your double cherry merlin it looks great i prefer a cherry dip versus the chocolate but i discovered that i'm allergic to these things oh no to the dip because <laughs> any any magic shell type dip has oh coconut. it has coconut, coconut oh because the coconut oil is what gets yep. really hard yeah yep. that makes sense it was a tragic discovery something I, to, yeah. I still learn about all the time <laughs> we just have to figure out how to make them out of like beef tallow or something right like some other some other fat that that is uh Bacon solid fat. <laughs> solid just below room temperature and liquid at room temperature <laughs> yeah seriously um i believe in us we can solve this problem for you oh emily is explaining mini golf and arcade and bubblegum ice cream is a big childhood memory of mine that's putt putt oh i definitely had uh similar places like that in um in the Bay Area, like we had, it was called Scandia, I believe. It's on its way to um, Vallejo. Okay. <laughs> um, and we also had dimples. <laughs> um, what is what is Andrew saying? I wonder what Gumby's and Pokey's taste like. What do you mean? Oh, like <laughs> if we made an ice cream out of Gumby and Pokey. Um, so much I don't know about ice cream truck technology. Um, yeah, so in ice cream trucks, so the softy is like, it's soft serve, clearly, because from the way that it's formed, it's not scooped. Um, what I don't remember what else they serve at the Mr. Softy truck. I think it's just that, and then it's like the the you know pre pre packaged popsicles. Oh my gosh, what was your favorite growing up in the pre packaged popsicles? Spider Man. Spider Man. No question. <laughs> With the gumball eye. Yep, yep. And oh. usually, like one of them was like <laughs> halfway down the face. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like. Ugh. Um, I was a huge fan of the Rocket Pop. Yeah, Rocket and, Pop. And um, the Pink Panther. Oh, nice. Pink Panther was pink lemonade flavor, nice. but it was that um kind of sherbety texture. You know, it's like these these cut and molded uh ice creams i don't yeah, think they yeah. were technically ice creams either i don't know what they were no i'm sure not i don't remember yeah, what by, i was eating by the fda definition of ice yeah. cream or whatever it is yeah <laughs> i'm sure that they do not qualify frozen treats yeah yeah <laughs> well i'm gonna stop uh sharing the screen here um so you can see our big faces um thanks folks for uh hanging out with us and thank you eric for sending me yeah, of photos course. to look at the, uh, what other ice cream questions do we have um in the chat um bear claw is saying frozen custard ice cream greater than ice cream where we're talking about soft serve i do love a custard i do yeah. love a custard yeah and really most ice cream now is like way more custardy you know like out of scoop shops I, I don't know, like contemporary american ice cream <laughs> is so eggy these days that it's it's almost all like in the custard custard range i can't help but agree yeah like custard all the way yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that kind of is the the base that i use for home home ice cream yeah. i use a lot of the new york times custard base recipe and switch out a lot of things um i was going to make a sorbet today but didn't have time um, but Max Falkowitz, who who was a previous guest on this show, wrote an incredible guide to making your own sorbets at home. Um, essentially, the recipe is, um, I believe it's like uh, for every pound of fruit, or is it three pounds? I might be misremembering this, but it's basically fruit and sugar and the best fruit that you can find that is fibrous. So like peaches and cherries. Um and yeah, it's a really thorough uh, instructional guide on how to make some race. So folks, if you want to check that out, it's on SeriousEats.com. Check out uh, Max Falkowitz's sorbet guide. Um, but do we have any other questions about frozen treats, my friends? Because 
uh, we're here and we want to talk about them because they're delicious. <laughs> I, uh, I have only tried to make my own ice cream once and it was a disaster. What happened? Um, I, uh, so I didn't have, I don't, I didn't have the, one of the like plug-in ice cream makers. I had one of the ones you had to like put in your, it was the KitchenAid thing that you had oh, to like, put in your freezer. You gotta. And then, rotary. no, you like, you attach it to the KitchenAid, but it's just, it gets very cold. It has like this mystery fluid inside of it, um, which becomes relevant later in the story to check off some mystery fluid. Um, so my tilt head KitchenAid mixer had a little bit more give than it was supposed to. And unbeknownst to me, the paddle was uh, dragging along the bottom of mm. the bowl and cracked it. <gasps> and so I got halfway through this first batch of ice cream that I had ever made. And I see these little blue traces in my vanilla ice cream. Oh, and it was the no. antifreeze, whatever liquid. That's that was scary. antifreeze flavored ice cream. So that's the weirdest flavor. Getting back to the earliest <laughs> question, the weirdest flavor ice cream I've ever had is, is mystery KitchenAid antifreeze fluid no, flavored ice cream. No, no. Yeah, but I want to get back to it. I really do. That's like one of my goals. Yeah, I, don't know, I have, I have the winter W H Y N T E R, which is kind of a higher end yeah. ice cream maker. Um, it's because I. You know, I make a lot of, I develop recipes for books. So I need to have like a reliable machine to just keep making batches all day if I need to. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. It's, it's like those ice packs from the 90s. Exactly. I don't know if it tastes <laughs> the same. I have not conducted that, uh, that particular analysis, <laughs> but yes, that's it. Those vibes. Hey Schmas, Good to see you. Uh, welcome. We are talking about ice cream. Schmas, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? <laughs> um, oh yeah, everybody, please tell us your favorite ice cream flavors. Um, uh, me, goodness, I, I really, so I have like a caveat with my favorite ice cream. I love anything banana flavored, but, uh, the most easily accessible banana ice cream you could buy is Ben and Jerry's Chunky Monkey. And I don't like the big chunks of the dark chocolate. I know that's a little blasphemous to say, but I think that if it was chipped, if it was in a thinner pieces, I would just devour it. But it's actually like, uh, I would say an inch big chocolate chunks that are quite thick. And it actually hurts my teeth when I try to bite into them. <laughs> we, um, um, I love banana flavored ice cream. And I think... It's it's very easy. Like great banana flavored ice cream is so good. Yeah. Like mediocre banana flavored ice cream still good, but there's just like such a big gulf between like uh, good and great. We just had. Um, I went to a new place, a, a new new to me, mm -hmm. not new to everyone else. Uh, that's nearby me. I'm blanking on the name of it now. I'm trying to like look it up on my phone real quick. But they have. Uh, it's it's in an old dry cleaners. It's a gelato <laughs> place, that's and cool. so all of their flavors are like. Uh, clothing they name it after like an article of clothing or whatever it's a gimmicky but they do really good gelato and so the one i got last week was um it was like banana and uh like chocolate hazelnut like nutella mm. flavor mixed in oh that was really really good yum uh let's see we got shma saying uh ben and jerry's fish food is probably top of my list all right um but you agree here we go um wait you okay the chat keeps moving really quickly <laughs> i agree the chocolate fish are a little too large a chocolate marshmallow caramel are like perfect for mm. me uh bear claw says mint in general for me yeah 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 um let's see andrew i had chocolate ice cream at a fancy restaurant with like spicy mandarin powder on top of it don't know if that counts but damn <laughs> that sounds cool that sounds really cool um emily says i just don't love chunks of chocolate and ice cream i do like a little more flinty situation with the chocolate i like a swirl i like a chocolate flavor um i've been making actually i've been experimenting with ovaltine <laughs> in ice cream it's a little subtle it's not as aromatic hmm. um but i also i also bought a um a packet of just the malt powder. So oh, I'm okay. gonna try to try to do some some malt flavors in the ice cream maker. Awesome. Yeah. Uh I think coffee. Wait, come on. <laughs> I think coffee ice cream is Emily's favorite. Yum. Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't know. 
you know, when you're at Baskin Robbins and like a kid, you don't know Jamocha almond fudge means coffee. <laughs> <laughs> does it have is it like is it cafe fully caffeinated? I don't know, but um, maybe that it was seems dangerous. It's dangerous. Like you need yeah. to warn children that the, <laughs> or warn people. Warn their parents coffee. at least yeah. that you're about to send them home fully caffeinated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nightmare fuel. Um, also, anything vanilla based with salty sweet mix-ins. I like a pretzel. In, mm -hmm. in the ice cream, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, mix-ins. Uh, what are some, like, really great, like, unique mix-ins um, that people have had? Yeah, Jamocha is very vague. Thank you. <laughs> uh, here, Shwa says, when I was little, my grandma didn't have chocolate syrup, so my sister and I just sprinkled Ovaltine on top of ice yeah. cream. Gotta say, it's really good. Yeah, yeah what's yeah. up? <laughs> cool. Um... Yeah, what other kinds of mix-ins have you seen across the board, like in all the shops that you've like been to? Um, I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, the the one that's jumping out at me right is Salt and Straw. Every October, does their creepy crawlies, so it has oh. candied crickets in there. Wait, in really? Flavors? Yeah, yeah. If we're going, if we're going like weird flavor, you know, talking about weird mix-ins. Cool. They do that every year. Um, Really I'm into it. Yeah, I need it. It's fine. <laughs> it's worth trying once or twice. Yeah. But yeah, they do. They have a really, they do a really good job of doing monthly flavors. Like, so they have, you know, a different, different subset of specials every month, mm. which I always appreciate as a, a, a regular. <laughs> Yum. I think I got my first olive oil ice cream from them. Oh, they do a really good olive oil. In Portland, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Where that's, where they're, they're, that's where they started. Flagship, yeah. yeah the flagship. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there is, I forget the name of the shop, but there was a um, an L.A. scoop shop that was doing Filipino History Month flavors. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Garden Creamer. No, Garden Creamer was, uh, is an SF. Mm, what's the name of the one? I went there. I went there for that month. You went there. I, yeah. I, I sent it to my family and I was on the way to the airport and they were like, we don't have time to go to Pasadena. And I was like, but, <laughs> but I won. <laughs> it was good. I forget what mm. it was. I, remember, I'll I look follow them on quick. Instagram and I don't remember. Uh, maybe, maybe Wanderlust. Maybe. That's Wanderlust right. Creamery. Wanderlust, Wanderlust yeah. Creamery. That's Creamery. That's what their name was. They're good. Um, but yeah, I, I hope more people experiment in that area of, of Filipino flavors. Um, they had like a cat's tongue flavor and cat's tongue is my favorite cookie yeah. <laughs> from home. It's like, um, they're like really thin lady fingers, like just cookie, like butter cookies. And they're called cat's tongues because they're like, <laughs> like real small. Yeah. And I, I, no shade on like a, a good ube, but I feel like everybody's doing ube now. But like Wanderlust, they they had like a whole like six. Like, yeah. They had, they had like a bunch of a bunch of really interesting flavors. Like, they had like yeah. a the uh, Edam cheese. They had a queso de bola. Yeah, queso, flavor. queso. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> just really good. Yum, yum, yum. Um, Emily says Ample Hills using that matzo toffee chocolate crackers as a oh, mix. Yeah. So smart. I've had that, and that's like nice and. Um, I, I keep saying the word flinty, but that is kind of the the word that that to describe that. It's very yeah. Weird. It's a nice Crisp. nice <laughs> divergence from the the ice cream texture. Mm -hmm. that you don't get a lot like with pretzels, like you mentioned before. Yeah, yeah, I'm a huge fan. Um, Chris says my granddad used to put shredded cheddar cheese on butter pecan ice cream. I'd try it. Nice, it's, yeah. It, it, it's kind of like the principle of putting shredded cheddar on apple pie. Apple pie, yeah. Yeah. Wait, how come nobody's made an apple pie ice cream with the cheddar cheese? I don't know. Let's yet. do it. Come Let's on, folks. It. Let's go. <laughs> what month would, if you're on your monthly calendar, what month would apple pie and cheddar cheese be? I feel like that's... Oh, September. Yeah, right? But like it has to be early fall, I feel. I don't know why, but yeah. yeah. Apples. I mean, that's about when um, cheeses are also like in season for that. Yeah. Like fresh cheddar, like um, not fresh cheddars, but like aged cheddars are coming out of the cave for about then. Yeah, Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Um, cool. Does anybody else have any ice cream questions for us in general? 
Oh, wait. Okay, Emily says Max Falkowitz has made cheddar ice cream for apple pie. So we just need uh, just need to keep uh, keep going. Take it one more step. I'm gonna Google this. Cheddar ice cream, Max. <laughs> I can't believe Max and I didn't talk about this. Oh, yep, I have I found it. I found it. April 15th, 2020. Cheddar ice cream for apple pie recipe. Here we go. I'm putting it in the chat for everybody. Maybe that's why you didn't know about it because it was in April and not in September. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Emily, for the tip. That's so funny. I mean, I pay attention to Max's pieces, but like, <laughs> I don't catch everything. Um, let's see. Uh, wait, what? what is Andrew asking? Yes, I've never had lychee ice cream. Do you need to go to Thailand or is it just not a thing that can work? No, it's Thailand good. Physics? Yeah. Yeah, it totally can. It. We, we can totally make lychee ice cream. Um, yeah, you're probably working with a lot of canned stuff here, though. Uh, it is a lot of work to peel the pit from it and the skins, but it's a lot of breakdown. It's possible, possible. It's it's in the it's in the uh, the yeah the the high high intensity of of breakdown area of fruit along with like pomegranate in the pomegranate quadrant the pomegranate. For, for, for for flavor. If, yeah. if we if we made a matrix of all of the fruits and difficulty of processing, yeah, yeah. then it would be in the pomegranate quadrant. I always, I always say bre you. breaking down pomegranate is my love language. Like I, if I'm willing <laughs> to break down a pomegranate and let you eat it, that means <laughs> We, I, I think so highly of you. That oh, means. that is such a great measure. <laughs> Pomegranate is my love language. <laughs> um, Shmash says the Milk Bar Cookbook has Christina Tosi's chocolate chip cookies that has a sub recipe for like this malted milk butter corn flakes. There's always extra. So on that, on ice mm. cream is supremely good. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Andrew, that explains why you haven't really seen it. Low profit margin, for sure. <laughs> Getting some love for your comment. Breaking down a pomegranate is my love language. <laughs> Gotta make a sticker. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then, you know, cut to all those people who make, like, TikToks about, like, this is the fastest way to break down a pomegranate. I know, you're supposed to do it in a bowl, underwater, or whatever. <laughs> I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. It's not what I'm talking about. There's no shortcuts to love. No. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it is easier to do it in a bowl underwater. I know. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Um, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no shortcuts to love. There you go. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Well, besides ice cream, Eric, can I just ask you, are there sure. other sweets that you tend to keep around the house? I just found this, this is getting back to licorice. So I just found out that we have a I thought I forgot that I had bought a bunch of this like mango licorice that I love. Ooh. And I just found it up on a high shelf where I had apparently past me had hidden it from from <laughs> future, from uh, more recent past me and I just found it. So that's what I've been eating a lot of this week is uh, is mango licorice and I I uh I went on like a little uh deep deep dive to find the correct brand because uh, this if this gets to be a too long story jen you can just like no, x, go x me out of the story no, please. so i before i lived in new york i lived in chicago and there's this like very fancy grocery store near where i worked called fox and obel it was ridiculous um and they had like the bulk bins of the, of this it was is kookaburra brand licorice and they had this mango that you could get of the, oh. of the kookaburra brand licorice. And I loved it. And Jess, my my wife, she loved it as well. So we ate it a lot back in Chicago. Then we couldn't find it in New York. Still couldn't find it. Uh, somebody suggested to me, I forget. Oh, it was my sister-in-law suggested like, oh, I think actually it was made by somebody else and repackaged by kookaburra. Oh. So then I had to, I was like trying to investigate and find who was the like original because uh i think out of out of new zealand so i was trying to find like who was the original manufacturer that was repackaged as kookaburra 
licorice and i i had i so i had stacks of mango licorice but i didn't have like the actual kookaburra to like compare to i was only comparing it to the image my the image in my mind but i think i found and i i managed to get the person like the sales rep i managed to get an email where he was like neither confirming nor denying that they were previously repackaged as kookaburra i was like i promise like this is a this is a good thing i'm not trying to put you on blast but (laughs) so i think i got it and so i did recently find a couple bags of that up on a high shelf and i've been i have been greatly partaking It's, it's pretty good oh i have my suite right next to me i um we're turning this into a semi mukbang <laughs> um i started making the la times uh chocolate chunk cookies uh these oh are, nice these are oatmeal uh and walnut and chocolate chunk and um the the batches are huge so i froze a lot of it so I, I can bake these whenever I need a cookie. Just bake a single cookie. Yeah. Um, That's the pro strat. Yeah. They advise to do three scoops, three ice, no, three tablespoon scoops uh, of dough for these. And is that I'm what like, that is? Yes. That's a big, that's a big cookie. I, I made single scoops after this, which are much smaller. Oh, I don't have any more. I ate them all, but I only have the big ones left. <laughs> Yeah, it is as big as my face. That's perfect. <laughs> um, Emily said earlier, Eric, you have merch opportunities. I do have merch opportunities. <laughs> I'm ready to go. No shortcuts to love. <laughs> Pomegranate. Uh, no, I have a white. That looks ah. amazing. Ah. I I have not been baking a ton of sweets lately, although I I did bake a cinnamon brioche this week. That's My, my goal is to bake a brioche every week this year. So Why brioche? I'm, um i don't know well i so there are actually a lot of one there's uh there's like a cinnamon bread brand in san francisco we just moved from san francisco to san diego there's a cinnamon bread brand in san francisco that i loved Mm -hmm. i can't find down here so i'm like might as well just figure out how to make it um i think it was a brie i'm pretty sure it was a brio or like in the brioche you know in the enriched breads family family <laughs> so i'm starting with brioche uh, and also when i was a kid my mom actually used to make me brioche for my lunch i didn't realize at the time how spoiled i was wow um, but, yeah she used to bake me like five little like brioche mini brioches for my lunch every week oh my gosh mom i know she's like single mom working full time oh like gosh. and still yeah every weekend would bake me so shout out to my mom yeah um so yeah i was like i've missed my cinnamon bread and so i'm gonna make it and so i've made two loaves now they were both not the best but i'm (laughs) i'm I'm figuring it out what recipe are you working off of um i started with i've started with see the one from serious heats of course um and then they referenced another cookbooks which i have on order from my local bookstore store so once i get that i'll probably give that one a try but that one's also good because it's two loaves per batch so i can put Mm, one in the freezer for for the following week or i can make two at once that's the other option but you just eat it yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) oh we got a suggestion Ooh, cinnamon brioche mixed into like caramel ice cream would be good yeah my goodness or like a a brioche ice cream cream sandwich sandwich. (laughs) yeah then then it doesn't matter if the ice cream is melty because the brioche is so soft soak it up yeah oh okay yeah Yeah, that's a pretty good idea yeah Um, we um we get my uh we get conchas every thursday at a farmer's market Ooh, concha. And, uh, yeah. and the guy there is like you gotta make an ice cream sandwich out of my conchas and so i'm like okay i'm gonna do it he doesn't even know he doesn't even know who he's talking to when he <laughs> says you gotta make an ice cream sandwich out of my conchas so i'm Yo. gonna do that someday soon too ah that sounds so fun i've been following yeah. um this baker named Teresa, who is starting uh, at Heart Panaderia in on the East Coast, and it's oh, wow. um, going to be all conchas. Oh. So beautiful, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. We, we have a the, the, there's a guy at our farmers market. He goes around all the farmers markets in San Diego. It's uh, Gila del Mes, and it's really good. He does all these oh. different flavors of concha. So he has like he had a gingerbread flavor at Christmas time, and yeah. yeah. And he does all he does a bunch of like the seasonal breads as well. So like he did the um the like wedding cookies at Christmas time and he did the like 
uh, Panda Muerto leading up to Dia oh, de Muerto. And, so fun. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, so yeah, we go there every Thursday. My, that is the only day of the week that my three and a half year old knows is Thursday. Cause he's like, is it market day? Oh, can we get conscious today? That's so and cute. I'm like, yeah, we can get conscious today. That is so yeah. cute. Um, and I know you're new to the area, but have you discovered um, some great tacos yet? Or like... Yeah, there's a, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I well, like once I find a good place, I will just keep going back there. So we have a food truck that's like within walking distance of our house, actually. Awesome. Um, that has fish tacos that just blow my mind. I so I don't, I don't, but I like you said, I'm new here, so like I don't know if they're the best, but they're like the best to me. So. I mean, when you find one, you like yeah. kind of stick with it. Um, yeah. My folks are also like that. <laughs> <laughs> But San Diego, I mean, there's a lot of great seafood. Oh, there's tons. Yeah. So great. Um, you haven't run into Tony Hawk on the street yet? Not yet, sadly. <laughs> no, I don't know if I would recognize him. Like, isn't that the Tony Hawk joke? That, like, somebody's like, who do you think you are, Tony Hawk? And then he's like, yeah. I so actually, I'm, I, I actually maybe that am. was me. Maybe that was me once. It could have been. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, he drives around asking kids to do a kickflip, and then he gives them a free skateboard. Oh, nice. <laughs> So you're saying I need to teach Augie how to do a kickflip, <laughs> so we can get so we can get a Tony Hawk skateboard. Yeah, it is a there meme for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's total meme. <laughs> um, friends, we are nearing, uh, kind of near the end of the show. We can still talk about ice cream. We got some time. Uh, if you got thoughts about ice cream, you got thoughts about or questions about maybe games. If you have questions about games, we love games also. We do. We love talking about them. Um, I don't know. What's the what's the, what's one that you're like really into right now? Um, I, I have not had a chance to play like a single game in like forever, but I'm getting one started right now. I'm very excited. It's um, it's we haven't we haven't figured out what exact like system we're going to use, but we I think we're going to use. Uh, this, if, this, if this gets too into no, indie please. game nerdery again, you can it. X me out. Um, so it's a it's a it's a system called um, called Scum and Villainy, which is a a reskin of Blades in the Dark, oh. which is a like a heist a heist. It's a dark fantasy heist game. I love me a heist. Scum and Villainy is like the space opera version of it. So think like mass effect or star wars or what have you so yeah we're really excited to get that started that's fun yeah oh, actually cool. with my with my old group from new york i've like i'm really i've really struggled to find like local gaming groups so i just keep reaching back to like the same five people i gamed with in new york like i mean uh, do you want to i mean who whom i love in case like not no shade on my new york group um <laughs> but yeah just being like hey do you want to play in my regency monster hearts game do you want to <laughs> play in my Mech Warrior Monster Hearts game. They're all, almost all of them start out as monster Monster Hearts pitches. But see, look, oh, we got we got Scum and Villainy is dope. Yeah. So we got an endorsement here. Scum I'm excited. I haven't I haven't played it or run it yet, but uh, I'm excited too. Uh, Bear Claws asking, ever go with borrowed time train? I actually don't know this one. When making a Shadowrun character, uh, I oh trait, I think. Oh trait. Borrowed trait. time trait. It's like... I don't. I didn't use borrowed time. No. Mm -mm. I have a. Uh, Forced concentration. I have astral chameleon. <laughs> I, I, I can't, give. Yeah. I can't remember all of them. I give my GMs enough ammunition without, without also giving getting points out of it. But yeah. Uh, Shma says I've only listened to Monster Hearts, but it seems so fun. Oh. That's my favorite game in the whole world. Yeah. Monster Hearts. It's so good. I'm so good. To find... I'm working on. I'm learning. Oh, here it is. I'm learning masks for. Uh, oh, nice! I'm doing a guest spot for Critical Bits sometime. Um, whoa, my lights just flickered. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, that's a sign. Whoa! Hey, Alex! Alex is here. Oh. Um, yeah, but I I chose the Outsider playbook. Nice for this. I love I masks. Yeah, I actually got to write a little bit for some of the mask stretch goals. Oh it was yeah, really great experience working with. Uh, yeah, Brendan and the rest of the Magpie team. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Great. Um, hi, Alex. Welcome. Alex, tell us your favorite ice cream flavor, if you if you have one. 
Um, Shma says, one day I'd love to play Shadowrun, but that is one intense rule book. Uh, confirmed. It is. <laughs> confirmed. Uh, I, I wish I had it right next to me, but I have um, so many little post-its and like notes. Um, and that's only in my magic section. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is my, my Shadowrun shelf is right. Is you have right a whole there. shelf. <laughs> Damn, I only have the core rule book. I don't have any uh, of the others. I would like, yeah. I, I think I might have every edition of the core rule book, in fact. <laughs> Possibly. I think I might be missing second edition, which is actually the first edition that I ever played of Shadowrun. But <laughs> yeah, many, it many is years ago. Very incredible. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This is like the first place we've ever lived where I've been able to take all of my books out of the boxes that they're in and we're only going to be here for another six months but i'm like oh, i'm just gonna shoot. throw everything on the on the shelves on these like beautiful built-in shelves and just enjoy it so i yes. mean yeah mine are currently I have my, and this is my this is my well, uh, this is my planescape shelf right here for, <laughs> for second edition ad and d yeah my, mine are all stacked like that right beautiful. now beautiful but it's like recipe books yeah. mostly those are all downstairs because those that's the part of my personality that i want guests to know about <laughs> and then and i'm not sure that i want them to know that i have a shatter and shelf out, right right off the bat so i keep that up here in my uh in my in my off work from home office you got another endorsement yes planescape Woo! yeah i love planescape that's my <laughs> longest i played in a 15 year long planescape game once. 15 years that's amazing yeah. That's incredible. That was oh what, from back home in Cincinnati. Started before I went to law school. And then we just wrapped it up, like, I don't know, about five or six years ago or so. And, yeah, took it through from <laughs> from AD&D to third edition and then fifth, ended it in fifth edition. That was oh fun times. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I'm only coming up on three years of Shadowrun. Uh, so, that, wow, 15. It was, yeah. Damn. Damn. I'm old. No, you're not. I'm seasoned. I'm well Seasoned. seasoned. <laughs> A seasoned judging, role playing gamer. Not judging, we're evaluating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, friends, we're nearing the end of the show. Um, let's play. Okay, you can answer this one question. How was it swapping through all those editions? Uh, it was good once we stopped caring, right? When we, <laughs> once we stopped being like, oh, but in second edition, I had seven attacks and now i only have three and we we're just like who cares does your character still feel fun like is this still going to be enjoyable for you yeah. like uh, i don't have spells anymore yeah deal with it so yes exactly yeah the i don't, I don't know getting rid of thaco was was definitely good for everyone but yeah <laughs> it was hard when we started out we started try so when uh, I don't, when we started the second to third i was actually working at wizards of the coast so we had like the playtest editions of the third edition core books. And we were like, oh, how are we going to do this? How are we going to make this exactly the same? And then we were like, never, we're never going to do that. So <laughs> we once we got out of that like six month period of like desperately pulling our hair, trying to get our characters to all feel exactly the same, it was a lot more fun. Oh, um, well, friends, uh, we're nearing the end of the show. Let's pretend we're on Chopped. Um, if you don't know this TV show, there's a basket with four mystery ingredients in it, and chefs have to use them to make a dish. Um, so you, the chat, are going to fill the basket. So the first four ingredients that we have in the chat, we will use in the game. Um, so just keep in mind that there are no wrong answers. The purpose of this exercise is to think about how far ingredients can go and maybe, maybe inspire your next meal. I'll go through all, eat all of the ingredients um, individually to make sure that you know you, we all know what we're working with. Um, but just start shouting out how you would combine two, three, or all four of the ingredients. Uh, no pressure. Imagine you have all the tools and time that you need. Uh, just feature the stuff in the basket. Let's go, guys. Um, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> from Schmas, mango licorice. <laughs> Classic ingredient. Uh, from Bear Claw, a bowl of poutine. Uh, from Chris, pickled ginger. Wow. And Emily, thank you for this layup, Cream. <laughs> thank you for that. All right, folks. Uh, how would you combine mango licorice, a bowl of poutine, pickled ginger, or cream in a dish? So you can just take two and go with it. Um, no ideas are stupid. No ideas are impossible. We can just talk through it. It's all right. Everybody. Everybody can participate. Uh, so what do we got? All right, we got mango licorice. We talked about this. Um, 
it is a sugar-based candy, <laughs> which can be diluted or um, candied or chopped up even more. Um, uh, we can make sauces from it. We can make simple syrups from it and make drinks. Um, what else can you do with licorice? I feel like you can make it into a glaze if you dilute it enough. Um, yeah, I'm open to ideas there. I actually haven't played around with licorice as an ingredient, but uh, lots, lots to be done here. So you said it's gelatin is what gives licorice its structure. Is that I right? I think so. Let's we'll we'll look at it. And I'm gonna. I'm curious what would happen if you like yeah heated it up and cooled it back down. Yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go try that right after we uh, right after we wrap up here. Yeah, why a producer around the world? Blah 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 blah. Uh, anise in extract. Okay, okay, okay. Um, licorice extract, sugar, and a binder. So starch or flour, gum arabic or gelatin. Oh yeah. So there's different kinds. Um, some of them have beeswax. Interesting. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. Um, poutine. Poutine is a kind of a French fry dish <laughs> from Canada, from Montreal specifically. It is um, French fries with gravy and cheese curds. So you could take this apart. You could, um, you know, <laughs> wash off the potatoes, <laughs> spoon off some of the gravy um, and melt the cheese. You could uh, dry out the cheese. There are lots of things you could do with that. Um, but it's already a constructed dish. It's like a brown. It's a brown gravy, right? It's a brown gravy. Yes, a brown meat gravy. Um, pickled ginger, like you would find on a um, sashimi or sushi uh, plate. It's that pink, the pinky kind that's uh, already pickled. They're uh, cut into thin sheets in um, when the store bought version. Um, I saw the other night on a TV show that you can get in Japan like a pickled a whole pickled ginger root, which is really cool, but uh, not easily found here in the states. Um, but that has a brine that you can work with that could be a marinade. Um, you can have big sheets of the pickled ginger to wrap things in. Um, just think about it that way. Goes really well with fish if you want to introduce some fish into a dish. And then cream is like that top layer when you milk a cow. <laughs> There's milk and then the cream rises to the top. And that's the high fat content uh, liquid that flows to the top. Um, okay, you, we've got some ideas in the chat already. Mike. Do you know what the what the percentage is that makes cream cream? No, How I much don't is it know. of fat? It's high, know. right? It's like. So yeah, I don't like, know. No, I will like, look. It's like above 20, I think, right? It's a very... What is heavy cream? Because, right, it's like 4% is whole milk. And then... Mm -hmm. What is heavy cream? Uh, they have decreed the heavy cream can contain 36 to 40% fat with the rest of the liquid being milk. That's a lot of fat. Damn. Yeah. Damn. All right, let's see. We've got some ideas in the chat. And Eric, whenever you have an idea, please do Sure. Come in. Yeah. I mean, I love the pickle ginger and mango together. We have we have, we do we have pickle mango sitting in our in our fridge right oh, now. Oh, yum. Yeah. It's like really good that we just like keep adding more and more green mango to it. So I think there's there's a flavor combination there that'd be really exciting. Ooh, and yes. then, you know, I you know, I asked about the brown gravy because my favorite kind of gravy is like a sawmill gravy. But like a like a so like a biscuits and gravy type gravy, Ooh. right? Where you do like a, a bechamel almost, basically like a. So I'm wondering if you can take the cream and the like the cream, the brown gravy, and the cheese, and like use that and make it like almost like a sawmill, like like yeah. turn the brown gravy into a white gravy almost. Yeah, you could. Um, you might, I mean, you'd have to, you'd have to probably add more roux to it. So you'd need to pull some, some fat and some flour out of the, out of the pan. We're allowed to do that, right? We're allowed oh to yeah, yeah. You have like a full pantry. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so yeah. Imaginary yeah, I, pantry. <laughs> I think that's the direction I would head personally. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Andrew says kimchi pancakes with the tiniest possible bit of licorice compote <laughs> on the side. Ooh, treating the licorice as a compote or a chutney. Yeah. Sounds like a great idea. We with the ginger vinegar. maybe. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mango licorice chutney with like a, the ginger. Oh, that's great. Like add a lot of acidity to it. Yeah. That's great. Good idea. Um, Shma says we could do like melted down licorice and ginger syrup to flavor ice cream 
the cream into an ice cream, make a milkshake, and do the poutine fries dipped in milkshake combo. Oh, <laughs> damn. I like that. I like this, uh, you know, full thought out, like, experience here. <laughs> Going yeah, it just the... needs to just add a little Jamocha to the milkshake <laughs> and then Jam you're off Jamocha. to the races. Yeah, Jam dip the fries in a Jamocha milkshake. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Um, Emily says mango licorice infused cream churned into ice cream. Get all the fries degravied and cheesed and refried to be chip like. Top the mango ice cream with pickled ginger and chips. Ooh, the fries yeah. as like, yo, that's Refry pretty good. Them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love a double fry, maybe even a triple fry. Ooh, so good, so good. Um, Let's see, pickled ginger wrapped mango mochi ice cream. We haven't talked about mochi ice cream. Have My not. goodness. I ate a lot of that growing up. Yum. Great. Good call. Good call. Um, friends, if you are just joining us in the chat, we are trying to figure out how would you use these four ingredients in a dish if you were on that show chopped. Um, mango licorice, a bowl of poutine pickled ginger and cream. So. I also feel like this is just my, my vision of poutine or like the big steak fries, right? I, like, so, or yeah. it is, I don't like, I, I, I like the idea of like uh, kind of julienning them and then frying them into like the really thin, like almost oh, shoe -string. Shoe -string. Yeah, yeah. shoestring chips. Yeah. Yum. That would be a nice, that would be almost to any of these would be like a good textural uh, uh, counterpoint. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. What else can you do with cream? So cream can become whipped cream. We can do um, icebox cake. Hmm. You ever had that? So we could do um, maybe, ooh, we could do like potato wafers. So if I if I cleaned off all the potato, uh, hear me out, hear me out, clean up all the potato, uh, mash it up, added flour, and made it into like a wafer sort of like wafer dough cookie dough kind of situation um we flavor that with bits of the mango licorice kind of like a candied orange peel like texture in there um and then do uh ginger ginger whipped cream like a little bit of the ginger in there and then uh wafer whipped cream wafer and then mm. some actual mango <laughs> yeah, yeah actual mango freeze that and then uh slice into it later Ice box cake. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I wonder if you could also do something with like. Uh, I, I feel. I feel like the is, maybe this is a wrong way of thinking of it. The more you, I can stick to these and not like reach out, like the 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 better job I'm doing. But if you could do like a pie crust with the potatoes and, yeah. the, and even a little bit of the gravy for like the savory pie crust, and then like a mango licorice like gelatin layer with like the whipped cream. I like then do that as like an ice box pie. Yo, right? That's a so good you have idea. like the three layers you, and do the ginger in the cream, the mango as like its own layer and then have the like salty, like savory potato crust. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and you can do like a little cheese crumble on top to, to, to make sure you use the cheese out of the We love too. a cheese crumble. Yeah, yeah what yeah. if we, um, yeah, I know how you would do that. You would uh, dry up all the cheese. So you'd thin, slicely thin all the cheese curd, like thin, thinly slice all the cheese curds um, and then dry them out in the oven to make a frico or crisps mm, yeah. and then crumble those. Yum, yeah. yum, yum, yum. Um, Shmon says you have to do some work, but you could like candy the fries with mango and ginger and make a whipped cream, make weird parfait trifle sort of deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Add the cheese curds for a salty surprise, salty surprise trifle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this kind of reminds me of that episode of Friends where Rachel puts beef. I was about to say, and then you just put the, <laughs> put the gravy in as the surprise meat layer. <laughs> What's not to love? French fries, good. Mango, good. Meat, good. Oh, um, a few bad dudes, you're here. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Oh, Andrew, I didn't realize you were in St. Petersburg. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so late. Um, okay, one more idea here. Pickled ginger goes in okonomiyaki, which pretty much means fried whatever, so you could hide everything in that. <laughs> Add batter and cabbage to tone it down and use the gravy as the okonomiyaki sauce. Yeah, I, we would strain it and then like, you know, uh, drizzle it on top. 
Yeah. I'd be curious to try it. <laughs> yes, I do have a bunch of trophies, LT, in my background. That's a seven-foot trophy right there. <laughs> it says it says Grill Master Champion on it. Um yeah, David says I came in on French fries good, so I'm already <laughs> Um folks, if you're just joining us, we are trying to figure out what would you do if you had a basket full of mango licorice, cream, poutine, like a dish of poutine, and then pickled ginger. <laughs> Last call for ideas. Um, bye, Andrew. Oh, so good to see you. Um, you're welcome for ice cream advice. I'm sure we'll have more. Um, but we are wrapping up. Last call for ideas, folks. If you uh, have, any, have any ideas on how you would combine all of these ingredients. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think. You don't have to use all four either. You could use two. So no pressure, folks. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, me and my palate would admit defeat and retire to the woods in shame. No. No, we will not. We will not be defeated by this basket of ingredients. Um, okay, so mango licorice, cream, poutine, and pickle ginger. My goodness. Oh, we could do a uh, cream of potato soup, break down the poutine, uh, have a little bit of a, a pickled ginger garnish on top with some chives. Super cute. Super cute. Um, I don't know. We can think of breakfast, lunch, dinner, dishes you already know how to make. So like tacos. What if there was a yeah, poutine soup honestly sounds nice, right? Cream of poutine soup. Poutine, patine to soup, P potato. Thank you for that. <laughs> we appreciate. <laughs> Eric, anything else coming to mind for you? Yeah, I, I, think, I think I'm still just dreaming about how I'm going to make this pie tonight. So. <laughs> I gotta run out and get a bowl of poutine after this. Yeah, and right. I'll oh be, my god. I'll be ready to go. I think I have everything else on hand. I know, yeah. You have your mango licorice in the top, <laughs> exactly. top shelf of your kitchen there. Um, well, friends, I think we're gonna wrap it up. If you have any more ideas or photos to share with me for next week, please do tag me on Instagram and Twitter at Randwitches. Um, I'd love to feature your cooking stuff. If you make anything this week, show me and I will put it on the stream. Um, but Eric, thanks for hanging out. Thanks with for you having me. It was and awesome. And the chat. Uh, just really glad to catch up with you. Yeah. Um, folks, if, uh, well, Eric, it, how can people follow you or get in touch with you if they have, uh, I don't uh, know, Ice cream I'm, game questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm present Eric, just all one word everywhere. So as opposed to past Eric or future Eric on Instagram and Twitter and everywhere. So that's the best place to find me. And I mostly talk about games on Twitter and ice cream on Instagram if you want to channel your attention differently. But yeah. Here, I put the link in the chat for folks so they can oh, follow you. Um, everybody, thanks so much for hanging out. I'll be back next week. Uh, I don't think I have a guest. No, I don't have a guest next week. So we're probably going to cook together, which is going to be really fun. I believe we have a new episode of Fun City coming out this Friday. Uh, I might have to double check that with everybody, but I think we do. Uh, we're excited to come back from vacation. Um, and yeah, if, if uh, you all want to send me some cooking photos. I would love to see them. Um, but everybody, please show some love to Eric. Give him a follow. Uh, and I'm, uh, have fun with the kiddos uh, tonight. <laughs> Good luck making your lunches and dinners. And <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Infinity meals. Forever. Infinity meals. My goodness. Um, I think uh, we're going to try to raid somebody in the chat, but Eric, stick around. I want to say bye to you properly after sure we thing. go out there. Um, but folks, uh, stay tuned. We're going to try to raid somebody next. Um, but thanks, and see ya, see ya, see ya next week. Bye, bye.